Now here I have the Uniformation GK3 Pro. In this video, we're gonna unbox it, but also I'm gonna test one thing. So stay tuned in this video to see what that one thing is because I think it's gonna be rather interesting to a lot of people. Now real quick, I have to say, this isn't a full review of this product. This product is actually still in development, not physically, not the packaging, anything like that. That's all pretty much set in stone. What's in development right now is still some of the firmware. And actually, that's why I have it. I have it to assist in some QA and stuff like that to kind of make sure the firmware is nailed down before it goes out to mass production. And with that, let's get unboxing this printer. First thing, I need a trusty little knife and let's start cutting. Paid no attention to my unwieldy knife skills. There we go. All right, now the best way I think to get these things for me is to actually tip them over and then slide it out. So we'll see how that works. And if you don't know this on some boxes, it's really cool this actually has these carry, these holders right here. If your box has the, the things that push in and you're trying to pull stuff out, those, those can actually get caught. So you always make sure you, you pull those out on the side before you try sliding the box out. Just a pro unboxing tip. So first out of the box, we got three bags here. One of them is a spare screen protector and a spare film. This is listed as CPFA. Yeah, CPFA. Um, so it's good to know that you've got a couple replacements in there in the box in case you do something bad uh, when, it first, when you first use it. We also have the leveling paper with some of the leveling tabs. If you don't know, this is really nice to level. Pretty much what I do is I take the leveling paper and the four little tabs. I will then start a print with the bottom layer being 600 seconds. Of course, I'm doing this without the vat, with no resin, and with the build plate clean and loosened. It's gonna come down and you've got 600 seconds to level that printer on the leveling paper. I prefer using this method over using like a leveling function built in the LCD. I find it's just a little bit more accurate on where that first layer prints. Seems like also in here we've got some instruction booklets. Let's see, a certificate of QA. We got the instruction booklet. Looks like we got a couple instruction booklets, just how to install the VAT and how to use uh, their slicer. I don't need that. All right, we're gonna use Lychee Slicer, which definitely will support this printer. All right, the next thing we got this box of goodies. Let's see what's inside. Gloves, we've got tweezers and tools, Wi-Fi, USB. It's actually a good USB. Uh, it's, a re it's got you know, a logo on it, but it's a rebranded like a Kingston, um, a good one. A little screwdriver, that's kind of fun. We've got the a good scraper. A good silicone spatula for, you know, squeegeeing your FEP nice and soft. We got the metal scraper, uh, extra screws, a few extra filters, which is good. Uh, adapter for your filters. And a good little pair of cutters. Uh, I haven't used these too much in resin, but I know some people like to clip their supports. I, I don't, but some people do. So there you go. We got a pair, a pair of cutters. I'm also pretty sure on here there's going to be additional software like slicing software. Let's we'll see if the Lychee Slicer software is on there or not. I think it's supposed to be. We'll check on that a little bit later in the video. All right, continuing on, we got a power cable. Cool. All right, let's get some, get some cardboard out of here. I like seeing shipped with these things. Definitely helps survive the, the travels. At this point, I might be able to get the whole printer out. Let's see. We don't need the box no more. All right, let's unveil the printer. So far, pretty good packing, I have to say. This is designed to open from the, from the top. I like that. That way I can just kind of do that. And there we go, our first look. Looks like it's missing the logo, which will probably be on there uh, for later units. Now let's take a moment to appreciate how clean the cover is before I touch it and get my fingerprints all over it. How hard is this? to manipulate. Obviously we don't want to break anything. It's feeling pretty tight. Like if I continue to go up, I'm going to break something, but I don't see, I don't see anything hitting. Well, that's like a catch 22. I can't get the hood open because the foam's in the way. I can't get the foam out of the way because I can't open the hood. We'll see that. There we go. Because it helps if the foam stays still. All right. Let's see. That just comes right out now. That smell is, it smells like a glue stick, like hot glue. All right, we got the, this is the, the carbon filter. And this carbon filter is like eight times the size of the carbon filters we find in some of the other ones. 
However, I still haven't seen any data that even one of this size actually does anything. I'll install it just for the sake of filling the, the plug back there, but to be honest, I wouldn't trust any carbon filter unless it was like maybe twice the size of this printer to actually save me from bad VOCs. You can be different, but your health, you know, your choice. All right, let's see what's going on in here. Some more foam. We got a build plate and that's it. All right, so we got a build plate here. It's very similar to the GK2 build plate, if not exactly the same. And then we got a little rubber band here for shipping. And we can't install this unless I raise that up. I can't raise that up unless I give it power. So let's power this thing on. All right, so right here, we've got the LCDs on. The LCDs on this side. I think there's really nothing going on over here. Yeah, it is a nice flip up right there though. That's kind of fun. So let's see here. Under the first tab, we've got U-Disc. Just, you know, if you have the disc in there, what you can pull off of it. Actually, let's put the disc in there. All right, let's see what's on the printer, what came on the USB, at least as far as the printer's concerned. I'm sure I'll see different things if I um, plug it into the computer. All right, first thing I can say, that USB is tight. It's actually pretty hard to get that in there. But let's see what came on it. So it looks like it came with a firmware update. Um, we've got some model files. We've got a couple heads in there, tutorial videos. What's interesting to see? Oh, that's gonna be if we are um, plugged into the computer. There's some tutorial videos in there. And of course the slicer, Chichi Box, Lychee, and Uniformation. Uh, so there you go, the, the Lychee slicer does come on the USB. Nice. All right, moving away from the USB on the file, there's nothing on this, this system right now. And of course we got some cleanup, which we don't need to clean up, we haven't printed anything. On the next tab, which is like the, the print tab, we've got Z movement, which is what I want right now. We're gonna go up to the top. There's a button that just says top. I'm assuming that will make it go all the way to the top. Now the question is, is it gonna crash or is it gonna stop? Let's see. I should be ready on the stop button. Oh, it stopped. There you go. No crashing. Now, here's something interesting. This is a ball screw, which is much higher quality than just a regular, um, they call them T-screws. But this is a single rail here in the center. There is not a dual rail system. There's one really chunky rail right in the center. I can see it here. So we'll have to see if that matches up with the what's on the website for the GK3 Pro. All right, now that that's up, we can, the way this works is you just undo these two tabs, pull them forward, and this thing should come kind of up and out. Now, the way this thing goes in, it's a little interesting. It's like a weird movement where you kind of put it in and then set it down. It's like, a, it's like a two motion thing. You can't do it in like one smooth motion. It's like put it in, clip it, and then go down, and that way it'll fit in there properly without binding up and causing problems. Looks like we got the release film in there. Is it ACF or NFEP? Let's find out. Uh, that's that's ACF for sure. It's actually pretty loose. I would actually say as far as what I'm used to in dealing with ACF. Let's peel the... Yeah, definitely ACF. And definitely much more flexible than ACF I've messed with in the past, for sure. We've got our screen protector here. Let's peel this off. Little protector film. So you've, you know, you got your protector film on. Make sure you remove it. Don't want to print with that on. Your prints will look like garbage. So now that's cleaned up. Looks like we we're, we got the gasket here on the screen protector. So on this vat, there's an interesting thing right here in the corner that's like a resin detector. And it kind of goes through a little piece of metal right there. And there's a little pin right there and a little switch. So that switch and that pin is what we're gonna activate first. And when you put this in, and there's a little resin catch right here in the corner and a little thing right here that catches any resin that might drip. This is for the pump system in the back. So the way this goes in is you kind of put it on an angle and you're gonna feel that pin and thing there kind of click. And then you can set it straight down and then you can lock it in and now you're in. And of course, you know, the hood going down kind of applying a little pressure on the front as well, locking it all in. I do like the, the lift hoods, uh, a big improvement over the, you know, the big hoods that go over. So it looks like this one's a, it's got the upgraded plastic um, from the GK3 Ultra to the GK3 Pro. So I think cracking is something we won't see on this particular printer. Little red uh, protective cover on that one, on that camera. Make sure you move that or it's gonna affect your quality for sure. The next thing is, is like some of the other printers, there's a catch right here. This catch is designed so that way when you're done with your print, you can set it right there and it's going to hold this printer up and let it drip. There's even a 3D printed little part right here up in the corner, it kind of uses like a stop that just kind of prevents it from falling forward. I would say, I'm probably would actually remodel this just by looking at it. It's not making very much contact with the corner, just barely tapping it right there. So I think uh, going in here, 3D printing this, just, just kind of extending this out a little bit would, for me, I think make it feel a little bit more secure. 
I definitely don't want this thing falling over and smashing into my, uh, well, destroying the printer. If that thing falls over and piercing the release film or smashing the LCD. When it comes to mounting your build plate, first make sure you remove this rubber band thing. You don't need that. And it just kind of mounts right on here, push the lever down and you're done. Pulling that lever down seems to suck it in and square it up. So it's very nice and tight and secure. It, it worked before in the past and it definitely works again. So looking here on the back, you've got our carbon filter. This thing is just magnetically attached to the back here. You've got your uh, Wi-Fi, ethernet and power. Now on the GK3 Ultra, there was a switch for the power to change between the volts. I don't think this is needed in this printer. I think they're just gonna get it with the correct voltage depending on your region. Not much going on the bottom. It's a uh, plastic. But we do have some adjustable feet, so if you want to level it out, there's also a level on the top here, like a the little ball level right there, just like on the GK3 Ultra. So if you want to level your machine, you can. Now, with resin 3D printing, the machine being perfectly level is really not that important, but it is nice just to get the vat so you, you know, can actually put as much resin as you can. If your printer is way out of level, you might not be able to add as much resin to it without getting some splashes. Now, also here on the back or the side, you've got this canister right here. This is a canister where you can put your own resin in it and now when you install it you've got access to the pump system if you put it in the right way now the pump system on this one will add resin but it won't remove it so it only drops it in to this corner right here based upon the sensor on this side maybe also one reason why it being level is important you want to make sure that this uh, sensor picks up the resin when it's you know the same across the entire build volume now, if you want to replace your resin, if you look back on the Lychee Slicer YouTube channel, I have created a few videos on some quick ways on how to quickly remove some of the resin from your vat. Now, also, this printer does have a built-in heating unit. It's not built into the vat like some other printers we've seen. It's also not a chamber heater like we've seen. This heater is a little bit unique, very similar to the GK2, uh, GK3 Ultra, where it's using the heater underneath the LCD and that heat in there to pump it into the chamber. So I guess it's kind of a chamber heater, just a unique take on the chamber heater. Now, real quick, there's something very important if you're planning on using this printer in a tight space, and that is, how does it fit when the hood opens? So let's check on that real quick. Not that hood. This hood. So if you go up to the 90 degrees, it's pretty much flush with the carbon filter on the back, or if you consider the plug right here, how much that plug's gonna stick out when it's plugged into the printer back there. So I think as far as putting it back against a wall, I think you're pretty safe. Now, it can extend a little bit further, not by much, but a little bit, that will bring that end out just a little bit more. So now let's use my trusty American tape measure here, and let's see how tall this guy is at its different apexes. So first I wanna start with the back here. It looks like at the top of its swing, we peak at about 28 and a half inches. And on the front, if we over, over lift it, we go all the way up to 30 inches. So at maximum, you're gonna need 30 inches to make sure that this guy fits perfectly. It's quite curious, how long is my arm? Almost 30 inches? Oh, there we go, look, pretty close. So basically, if you've got my arm's length, uh, you're good to go, that's all you need to know, just my arm's length, and you have enough space, yeah. Now, if we head over to the Uniformation website, we can see a few things about this printer. Right now, it's on pre-order for $800 USD, and that's just for the bare bones printer without any extra stuff in it. Uh, it's a 16K LCD with a COB and Frenzel lens combination. Now that should give us the best light uniformity across the LCD, something I'll have to check in the future. Now here's the really interesting thing about this printer I kind of hinted to at the very beginning. What makes the Pro the Pro? And that's actually the light source. So in all of our resin 3D printers that we've been using for quite a while, they're using a UV light source that's creating a 405 nanometer light. This one's advertising to create 385 nanometer. Now, if you don't know why the difference or what their, what their kind of pros and cons are, 385 is going to not penetrate as deeply as 405, but it is going to cure um, a little bit harder on the surface. So you're gonna get kind of cleaner cures without as much Z-blooming. Z-blooming is where you basically over-penetrate into the resin and cause some blooming on the backside of your model, especially like where supports are. This should help eliminate some of that, but some, you know, we'll have to kind of put that to the test. That 385 nanometer should also help out a lot when using like clear or highly transparent resins where the light can kind of bloom and push through quite a bit. With the 385, it won't push through as often. But just know that if you're someone who uses a lot of like high um, accuracy, heavy, thick resins, you might want to stick to a 405 and not go over to the 385 because you might have a little bit more issues getting that to cure as deeply, especially if you still like to print at 50 nanometer. 
I could imagine going down to like 30 nanometer or 20 nanometer, there could be some benefits on this printer. So I think in this one, the pro line, which might be here with the logo on it, might actually mean something more than just a marketing thing. This is um, quite a different resin 3D printer than other ones we've seen. So now some quick stats about it. The maximum print volume is 211 by 118 by 240 millimeters. The resin vat capacity is 800 milliliters, and the auto feeding cartridge capacity here in the back is 1200 milliliters. It's a manual leveling system, which I am all for. Um, if you watch my other stuff, I, I have good reason for not enjoying automatic leveling. Very happy it's manual leveling. The file formats are a little bit interesting. .ctb is gonna be the primary file format if you're you know, using ChichuBox or Lychee Slicer, and that's because this thing is powered by a Chichu Systems motherboard, like any of your Elegoos or frozen 3D printers. Uh, Anycubic makes their own, but for this one, it's a Chichu Systems motherboard, and their primary format is .ctb. Uh, you might see like .goo, that's LGU specific, and now they have theirs, which is um, .jxs, which is using um, their slicer. Their slicer is, um, it's like a, a reskinned of Prusa slicer, which is interesting that they included that in there. So all in all, the thing weighs 24 kilograms or 52.9109 pounds, you know, so. I'll just say 53 pounds. Uh, so not, it's a little bit heavy, not terribly heavy, but yeah, definitely up there as far as 3D printers are concerned, especially for a 10 inch. Now, earlier I had stated that there's one thing about this printer I really wanted to test. And what I want to test is that 385 nanometer. And I've got this tool right here to help me do that. Now this tool is very, very sensitive. So I'm not looking for UV power on this one. I'm only looking to see is the this Cobb light system in here what spectrum is it really producing? So to do that, I've added this little medium right here. I have to do this uh, because like I said, this thing is very, very sensitive and the UV power coming out of this thing is, is pretty strong. I'm just gonna start a little print right here, pull off my cap, put it on the medium, and then I'm just gonna come over here and just take a quick sample of the light spectrum. And there we go. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a peak on there. So let's see what, what we've got. So it looks like we are peaking at 385 as advertised. Now I see a little bit of a bump over here. Let's move this line to 405. And that's not where we're at. At 405, there's not a lot of light going on. There's a little bit of noise coming from, you know, maybe all these lights in the room. And yeah, that 385 is definitely where we're seeing the peak on this thing. So it's definitely a very different printer that maybe you've used to. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking at the GK3 over the GK3 Pro. And there you have it, the GK3 Pro. It's gonna be very similar to the GK3, you know, with the difference between that 405 and 385 light source. Let me know in the comments if you think this truly is the predecessor to the GK2, a printer we all very much loved and enjoy. And if you could, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on our Lightsheet Slicer Discord or other social media. And as always, I hope you enjoy watching this video and have a good day.